So this is going to be a demonstration on how to do a modified three clamp technique on this ovarian pedicle model. So what you can see here is that this is going to be your ovary and this is going to be your uterine horn. Cranial is this way, caudal is this way. So what you're going to be doing is putting some traction on your ovarian pedicle initially by putting a clamp on the proper ligament and then holding the clamp and the ovary in one to pull you'll be reaching down in breaking down the suspensory ligament and leaving behind your ovarian pedicle after this you would go ahead and make a window into your broad ligament which we don't have here so you would do that by pushing a clamp through the a vascular portion of the broad ligament. You're gonna be able to see through that area. You'll be able to see thickened fat and possibly vessels in the area of the pedicle. So you'll poke your instrument through in that avascular area and open your instrument up and down to make that window nice and wide. From there, what you're gonna do is place your clamps. So your tips should always be up and pointing out of the abdomen. Your first clamp closest to the ovary should be at least five millimeters away from the ovary and you're gonna go ahead, make sure you don't have any other tissue included in that clamp, no intestine, no mesentery, no omentum, and no body wall. And you'll go ahead and place your clamp. And then your second clamp will be placed about five millimeters proximal, because remember we're talking about proximal is gonna be closer to where your blood supply is coming off to that ovary. It's gonna be further closer to the body wall. You're gonna place your second clamp there. And then what you'll do is go ahead and move this clamp. You're gonna place this through the window the same way that you did these clamps and go ahead and clamp off that uterine horn so that when we cut this, we're not gonna have any black back bleeding from the uterine artery or vein. So now we have our clamps in place and we're gonna go ahead and tie our ligatures. So just zooming in a little bit. The first ligature I'm gonna place is gonna be the most proximal ligature. And this is gonna be a circumferential ligature using a surgeon's throw as my very first throw. So I'm gonna pass the end of my suture. Again, normally I'd have an assistant helping me, so excuse me for the mobility here. I'm gonna pass my suture, the non-needled end around my pedicle Oh, doesn't want to stay in place there. Pass it around. You can grab it with your fingers. And ideally, you'd have an assistant sort of rotating these clamps so you can see really well. Right now, I don't have that, so it's going to be a little bit more mobile. But what I'm going to do is do a surgeon's throw. So one, two. Grab this. And as I tighten this down, make sure it goes down nice and square. I'm gonna remove this clamp and tie that ligature in the crushed area that's left behind. Pull that nice and tight. So when I look at this, I wanna make sure that I see blanching of the tissue as well as a nice waste that's created. So I've done my square throw, I've done it on top of my surgeons and then I'm gonna do two additional square throws for a total of three square throws on top of the surgeons and two knots total. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these tags about three to five millimeters in length. So a good way to cut is to bring your sutures in and just rotate them a little bit away from the knot. That way you can see your suture and see your tips really well when you're cutting. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and place another circumferential ligature. And this is gonna go again through that window around the pedicle and the idea for this one is it's going to be between 
that first ligature that I've placed and the, most, the now most proximal clamp, which was previously the middle clamp. All right. So I'm gonna do my surgeon's throw. It's gonna be a little bit challenging because I don't have an assistant again. But what I wanna do is start to, well, I wanna make sure that goes down square, start to tighten this. And as it gets tight, I need somebody to go ahead. I'll ask my assistant to just open this up. As I tighten this, but not remove it entirely. So that's gonna restore the nice round shape to my pedicle. And then once I get it nice and tight, I'll have my partner reclamp. That's gonna allow me to get this ligature nice and tight, but still leave two clamps in place. So again, three square throws on top of my surgeon's throw. All right, so you can see that these ligatures are nice and tight. My knots are nice and secure. I don't see any looseness to those knots. I see a nice waist where both of the ligatures are. I haven't incorporated anything I haven't meant to, and I'm still far away from the ovary. So at this point, I feel comfortable saying, yep, I'm ready to go ahead and transect my ovarian pedicle. And always when we are making that transection, we're gonna be doing it between two clamps. Remember, this is gonna be cranial or more proximal. Caudal is in the other direction. And so we're gonna cut right here. So when I cut here, we're gonna pull this ovary back towards the uterine body, which is gonna be back here. I want to leave myself enough room to grasp my ovarian pedicle, but still be far enough away from my ovary that I don't incise into the ovary at all. So I'm going to pull this back. I'm going to go ahead, grasp my pedicle. I always want to grasp either distal to my clamp, between my clamp and my ligatures, or worst case scenario, between my ligatures, but you never ever want to grasp on your ligatures or proximal or closer down to the body on your ovarian pedicle. So I'm going to grasp here because I have enough tissue there. I'm going to open this up, make sure I don't have any bleeding, and then slowly let it retract back into the body wall, taking off tension on those vessels and making sure I don't see any bleeding. 